Hi, Bill Ham here, and today I want to answer a question that I get asked a lot, and that is, um, how do we set goals for our business and for cash flow? Everybody is actually out there looking for cash flow. I travel around the country and I do a lot of lectures, and what I always ask everyone is, what is your number? What do you need monthly for cash flow? What's your, your monthly cash flow number? And I'm not talking about being rich and, and living in uh, Vegas and driving a Ferrari. I'm talking about just what is the number that would make a real difference in your life as far as passive revenue is concerned? The number one answer, $10,000 a month. That's everybody's main answer, which is good because it actually makes my math a little bit easier. So if your number is not 10,000, then we can kind of use this formula in increments of 10,000. You know, maybe your number's 20,000 or maybe it's 5,000. But again, just using 10,000 makes the, the math a little bit easier. So what I want to talk to you today is what I call the conveyor belt theory of real estate. I'm going to show you how we actually go out and create uh, passive revenue. A lot of people misunderstand how this works. So what I want to show you here uh, is, all right, we're going to start off with that $10,000 a month. All right, if we need $10,000 a month in passive revenue, all right, where does this come from? And that's what a lot of people do not understand is where does passive cash flow actually come from? First of all, let me tell you, passive revenue does not come from passive activity. Quite the opposite. Passive revenue is probably some of the most labor intensive in its creation. Once it's created, then it becomes passive revenue. But in the beginning, not passive at all. All right, so if we want uh, $10,000 a month in passive revenue, what you're actually after is $1.5 million. All right, make sure I get all my numbers in there right. Something like that, $1.5 million at an 8% cash on cash return. All right, so I'm gonna clear that out. What I'm telling you is that you actually need equity. If you are trying to produce cash flow, it is based on ownership in that asset. And so that's where I've come up with this formula. 1.5 million, all right, multiplied by 0.08 gives us 120,000 a year. Okay. $120,000 a year because 1.5 million times 0.08 equals $120,000. All right. If we divide $120,000 by 12 months, that equals the 10K a month that we're actually after. So you can see here, if your goal is to produce $10,000 a month in passive revenue, your real goal is the production of $1.5 million in equity, producing an 8% cash on cash that will give you $120,000 a year, right? So this is understanding our goals and goal setting and how are we gonna actually achieve these goals. So often I go around and I give a lecture and I ask everybody, hey, what's your passive income number? And they say, $10,000 a month. And I say, great, how are you gonna uh, produce that? And they say, gosh, I don't know, I guess I'll buy some real estate. Okay, that's not a very good answer. We need to actually break down how you create that. So if you have $1.5 million, Hey, all you have to do is just invest that in real estate in an 8% return. Boom, you get $10,000 a month. Let's assume for this conversation, you don't actually have $1.5 million at the moment. Then your goal is not cash flow. Your goal is not $120,000 a year. Your goal is to produce the $1.5 million in equity that is producing that cash flow. Now, I want you to understand this is a basic formula, okay? Because some deals will produce more than 8% cash on cash. Some deals might produce less than 8% cash on cash. I'm using that 8% because I've been in this business for 16 years. And what I found is that over the decades, the average cash flow for a multifamily or a real estate project is about 8% cash on cash. All right, so that's why I've kind of roughly come up with these numbers. If you're producing less than 8%, you're obviously gonna need more than 1.5 million. If you're producing more than 8%, obviously you would need less than 1.5 million. So this is just a general example to explain to you how cash flow is actually created, all right? So now that we know where that's created, how do we go out and produce this $1.5 million that we need? Well, there's lots of ways. You can flip real estate, such as flipping houses. I flipped houses when I got started. 
You can syndicate deals, such as maybe syndicating larger commercial or multifamily deals, um, bring in on partners, bring on investors. You can wholesale uh, the Burr model, which is buy, renovate, refinance, and repeat. I believe that is. You can, you can do lots of different techniques to get that $1.5 million. You can win the lottery. You know, hey, scratch the lottery ticket every now and then. You never know. You might get lucky, right? Uh, but that's not a business model. Let me be clear. So we want to create a, a $1.5 million in equity. All right. So what we want to do is now discuss the conveyor belt theory of real estate. This is a theory that I've created to teach my students uh, an example of how we're actually going to run a real real estate business. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine a conveyor belt, right? And you'll have to... Uh, put up with my really terrible uh, artistic skills here, but we're going to assume this is a conveyor belt, right? And our conveyor belt is going to be five years long like this, okay? So this is five years here. Go in this direction. In year number one, we are going to put our first asset on the conveyor belt, all right? So that goes on the belt, year number one, okay? And it's moving along this conveyor belt in this direction. As our properties move along through time, this is going to be cash flow. We're, we're creating cash flow here, right? Now, as you go into say, let's say this is a year number one here, then maybe as this moves along a little bit, we've now moved into year number two, okay? So this would be a year number two here. This now moves over to year number one. Okay, we've added our second property in year number two, maybe year number three, we've added another property, year number four, year number five, where each year we're adding one more property, just as an example, okay? So I'm gonna erase this, I'm gonna start over before this gets too uh, squirrely looking here. All right, so we've got our conveyor belt here again. All right, we understand now this is five years long and we've, we've put some uh, assets on here. Maybe we started off in single family houses you know, now maybe over the years we've moved on to commercial buildings, something like that. Um, by putting these properties on the conveyor belt, they're moving along. Okay, we are getting cash flow as these assets move along our conveyor belt. We may even be getting some acquisition fees. Okay, when you start syndicating or doing larger commercial properties, there's a good chance you're going to be bringing on partners, investors, things of that nature. We'll discuss that in another video. But you can sometimes get paid a fee at closing for bringing the deal on. So our money as syndicators and, and investors could be making money at closing. We get a syndication fee. We may get an asset management fee or cash flow as the assets are moving along the conveyor belt. And in the end, we come to a liquidity event. This is now that first property. Remember, this is now year one. This would have been year two three, four, and five as we're going along. So when we get to the, the first property reaches the end of the conveyor belt, we're gonna assume this thing comes off the end of the conveyor belt. That is what we're gonna call a liquidity event. This doesn't necessarily have to be a sale. It could be a refinance, right? Just some sort of exit that allows us to capitalize and, and monetize the equity in this property. So now we're assuming that first property has come off the conveyor belt. That's our year one property. We're taking capital gains, and what you wanna do is roll those capital gains back to the beginning of the conveyor belt, and we're gonna add the capital gains that you've gotten from this property. We're gonna roll that back over here, and we're gonna add that to the purchase of that next property. Therefore, reducing the amount of money that we need, reducing the need for partners, reducing the need for uh, investors, and making sure that we keep more of that money. So the idea here is that it's going to probably take you a few years to build your business. You've got to understand that. This is not something you're going to go out and close one or two deals and then be retired forever, live on cash flow. That's very that's guru nonsense. If somebody starts telling you that kind of stuff, be careful. They're probably about to sell you something or they're going to tell you to run to the back of the room, get your credit card out and spend a whole lot of money. I'm not here to sell you anything, so I'm telling you the truth. This takes time, okay? So as we're closing each deal and it's going into our portfolio, it's now moving along, we're cash flowing, we come to the end of our hold period, we exit, refinance or sell, we take our liquidity, we bring it back around to the front of the conveyor belt, reinvest it in these deals, and now the, the cycle continues. And every time one of our properties comes off the back, we're rolling that capital gains to the front. This can be in the form of, say, a 1031-like kind exchange. It could be, uh, this is a tax-deferred exchange. 
You can be in several different manners, but that's the concept is that you're going to now create this system that is going to run over and over and we're, we're putting assets on, you're selling, exiting, taking that liquidity, reinvesting. This is what a real real estate business looks like. It takes time to build. And this is what I call the uh, conveyor belt theory of real estate. Okay. And it, it shows that you are going to be transaction based for a little while. And this is my point that cash flow is not passive in its creation, right? If you can go out and build a real estate business and not be transaction based for a little while, write that book. I'm your customer and I'll take your class. If you can go out here and do this without closing some deals. That's one of the biggest complaints I get early on. I don't want to be transaction based. I don't want to be chasing deals. I don't want to, I don't want to have to uh, make this a job. I want this to be passive. Again, if you can figure out how to create passive revenue without any work, let me know how that's done, right? The only way I know how to do it is haul off and write a check. So if you've already got a million and a half dollars, then forget everything I told you and just write that check and, and you'll have cash flow. If you don't already have a million and a half bucks, then the conveyor belt theory is what you're going to actually be doing. This is how a real business works. And let me tell you all something else. This is real legacy wealth. Right? Everybody wants to talk about legacy wealth. Everybody wants to leave their, their later generations some sort of, of equity and some sort of wealth for their children. Do not leave them assets. Leave them a business of creating assets. All right? That's what you want to do going forward because think about it this way, properties age. And if you were to buy this property and never sell it, I get that question a lot. Hey, if I own a property and it's cash flow and it's making money, why would I ever sell that? because it's going to get old. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to leave a property to your grandchildren, you're going to make them slumlords. That property is going to be old by the time you get around to giving it to them. And they're probably not going to know what to do with it. They're not going to want to be in the business and that's a mistake. So what you want to do is create a business that you leave to your family. Legacy wealth is in business and legacy wealth is in education, not assets. This is the conveyor belt theory of real estate. Bill Ham, give me a follow, a like, uh, whatever platform you happen to be watching this on, just give me a click and we'll be bringing out more information just like this.